Honestly, this is 100 times better than any design I've ever made in my life. Software development is traditionally extremely expensive, but that got me thinking. Could I hire an entire development team of freelancers and get the exact same result for less money? And that's exactly what today's sponsor Fiverr challenged me to do. So I'll be hiring a copywriter, a designer, a front-end developer, and a back-end developer off of their site to all work together to build a brand new application completely from scratch. So first we need an idea. And in 2023, if you want to build the next unicorn tech startup, it's actually fairly simple. Just take some basic idea, throw AI at it, and profit. At least that's how it seems. So that's what I'm going to try to do today. So I'm going to have them build a task management application. Think fancy glorified to-do list, but with AI. So you give it some simple prompt and it should automatically generate for you a useful and detailed task. So my plan is to start with the copywriter and the backend developer because their work doesn't depend on anything else. Then I'll give the copywriting to the designer to make a design. And then finally, I'll give the design as well as the backend to the frontend developer to sort of bring everything together. So for the backend developer, we're going to go with M. Arslan Ahmed, and I hope I'm not completely butchering that name, but he says he can develop a backend using Node.js, Express, and MongoDB. He has a few different packages available here, but none of them fit our use case perfectly. So I did message him and he agreed to build out the entire backend of our application for $200. I also sent him the API key for the GPT API and this example prompt that I wrote to have ChatGPT auto-generate a task with JSON. Now for the copywriter, we're going to go with Calais, who says they will write compelling website content. So for this one, we're just going to use the basic package, which is going to cost $150. Okay, so it's been about four days and we got the copywriting and the back end back. So I want to go ahead and go over all of that and then we will make the next order, which is going to be the design. So here's the copywriting. It's just this one document and it might not seem like a whole lot, but if you think about this practically, if you're running some business, all you would need is for this copywriting to help sell, say one to three extra of whatever it is you're selling and it would probably pay for itself, which I'm confident this would actually do. So we have this tagline of meet the ultimate AI task management tool, more life, less work. I love that. I think it's super clean and very quickly sort of showcases a value proposition. It's easy to use. I like this section a lot too, where it's sort of broken down into three steps. So task management has never been this easy with, and I never gave them a product name. So we just have insert product name. That's fine. I'll give the designer an actual product name. And we have three steps is all you need to keep your time and life on track. And what I like the most about this, so we have sort of step one and step two, but step one is the only step where you're actually doing something. So by step two, we are watching the product do something for us. And then by step three, we're not even using the product anymore. We are getting back to our day. So it just shows very clearly and succinctly how incredibly easy this is to use and how much time it can actually save you. Then we have the see how it works section where it sort of shows you exactly how the product works. Then we have this why you'll love it section with some bullet points of why the product is so good. I'm excited to see how the designer actually incorporates this into the landing page, but this looks super good to me. And then we have simple tasks, simple life, sign up now. So I like that sort of final call to action that I imagine would be at the bottom of the design. So that's the copywriting. I think they did a great job here and I'm excited to see how the designer actually incorporates this into the design. But first, let's take a look at the back end as well. So for the back end, we have a MongoDB database and Node.js and Express for the actual code. And this seller went way above and beyond. So he sent me a bunch of screenshots on how to set everything up, how to test everything with Postman if I wanted to do that. And he even offered to get on a video call with me to sort of walk me through everything. So he went way above and beyond, amazing customer service. But anyways, let's take a look at what he actually delivered. So this is our MongoDB database. So we can see we have tasks as well as users. I just named it test. So obviously we could rename that. So tasks is going to be what contains the actual tasks. We can see I created a couple here. I think some of these he created, but each one is going to have a title, a description, a category, priority, notes, as well as tags, which is an array. And we have the user who created it as well as the timestamps. And then the users is simply users. So each one has an email and a password. And of course, it's great to see that he's encrypting the passwords so they're not stored in plain text. And we have the timestamps as well. And now for the code, honestly, everything at first glance looks super well implemented. So we have our routes, so user and task, 
If we go into task, we can create a new task, generate a task, get a single task or a list of tasks, update a task and delete a task. Then we have our user routes, which is sign up and log in. And then we have our models. So the user has an email and a password. And the task, of course, has all of the same properties that we saw in the database. And then we can come over to our controllers. So first of all, with the user, this is going to be sign up as well as log in. And we can see when we log in, it's going to send the access token and refresh token back to the client. Hopefully this isn't too complicated for our front end developer to actually figure out how to use, but it'll send these tokens so that the backend knows that you are the user you are claiming to be. Then we have the task controller where most of the actual business logic is. So we can create a task, which is going to save it to our database. And we can see we have some great error handling here. We can generate a task from OpenAI. So this is actually going to generate a prompt to give to GPT. And then it is going to call the OpenAI API. And it seems like he did a great job of dealing with that. And then we can see we return our data that came from OpenAI back to the client. And then we have list all or a single task. Honestly, I wish he called this something other than fetch because fetch is a built-in function, but that's a tiny, tiny little point. Overall, this code is super, super clean. Then we have update a task as well as delete a task. And again, all of this code, super clean, basically exactly how I think I would have implemented it as well. So great job to the backend developer. Okay, so now for the design, we're going to go with Kiki, who is a top rated seller. And she says that she will do a Figma website design, which is exactly what we need. And it looks like the basic package only contains one page, but I actually want to get two pages. That way we can have a landing page and the application page. So it looks like for two pages, it's going to be $280. So I'll get this ordered and then I will send her the copywriting as well. And I'll check back in once we get the results back. Okay, so it's been about a week and we got the design back. So let's take a look at it and then we can order the final service, which is going to be the front end development. So first we have the landing page design. And honestly, this is 100 times better than any design I've ever made in my life. This is absolutely stunning in my opinion. I love this design. It fits the vibe we're going for perfectly and it utilizes all of the copy that the copywriter wrote in such amazing and creative ways. So we have innovative AI tool that helps manage tasks so you can enjoy more life. Then we have the more life, less work sort of tagline up here. Neuraltask.ai is the product name I gave them. So I'm just a generic sounding AI product. Then we have these images from the actual product up here. And then we have sort of this like design in the background, which I'm assuming these are SVGs. I'm a little concerned for the front end developer. This looks like it could be very difficult to actually implement, but if they're able to do it, it's going to look super, super cool. Then we have easy to use with these three steps. I like the way they laid them out sort of horizontally. I think that looks very nice instead of having just like vertical, like number one, number two, number three, I think it looks much better like this. And then we have see how it works so you can sort of understand better what exactly the product is and then the why you'll love it section. So these are those four bullet points that the copywriter wrote, but they're sort of laid out in a very interesting way. And I just love the way this looks. It's way more visually interesting than just having four bullet points. And then finally, at the bottom, we have sign up for free. So this is a final call to action and then a footer. And here's the actual application page. A quick caveat that I didn't do a great job of actually explaining what features we do have and what features we don't have. So there's a few things on here that we don't actually support from the back end. So I'm going to tell the front end developer just not to do. And there's a few things we are doing that aren't necessarily on here exactly. Of course, I could have asked the designer to do some revisions, but it was entirely my fault. And I thought that it was close enough to where the developer will be able to figure it all out. So we have create new task. So you type in a task here and it creates the task for you. And here's the list of all of the different tasks, as well as we can see, for example, we can edit and delete tasks by clicking this little button. And then if we come down here, we can see what it looks like when you are actually editing or creating a new task. So we have this modal, and this is where there's going to probably be a few changes that the developer is going to need to make because I wasn't clear as to what the exact properties are that the tasks have. So we're going to need to add and remove a few things, but generally speaking, this should give them a good idea to go with. All right, so I'm super happy with the way that turned out. So now let's move on to actually hire the front end developer. So we're going to be going with Hasham Vakani, who is going to be implementing this site using React. 
And it looks like we're going to need his gold package, which is going to be $300. So I'm going to get all of the details together of the design and the back end. I'll send them all off to him and I'll check in again once we have the finished product. All right, so I finally got the completed version of the website back. So let's take a look at the output as well as we'll go over some of the code the front end developer wrote and I'll give some feedback on that as well. So at first glance, this looks pretty much identical to what we had on the design. So great job so far from the front end developer. We have the name of the product. Oh, I like that little hover animation. Then we have the nav bar, all of this text, these images, sign up now. Okay, cool, this brings up a little modal. We didn't actually have any design for sign in and sign up, and he did a good job with this. One thing I don't love is that changing these changes the width of that button, which feels a little bit awkward, but either way, this looks good, especially being as we had no design for that. Then see, easy to use. That looks identical to the design once again. Great job with these gradients and all of that. And then see how it works. I feel like this text is a little bit small, but I don't know if that's because of the design or the front end, but either way, the text feels a bit small and then why you'll love it. Great job again with this sort of like grid system. I don't know if he used like CSS grid for this or how he did this. I'll have to look at the code in a moment. And then good job with this like SVG background thing too. Did a great job with that. Sign up for free. And I assume this brings up the same modal. It does. Okay, so let's sign up. So let's say Connor at some email.com and I'll go with a great password of password. Sign up. Ooh, I like the little loading animation and perfect. Okay, so now we have this main task page. No task available in our task list. So let's create a task. So I'll say wash the car, create. And I like this little loading animation again. So wash the car. And then we have our description that came from GPT. Our category is home. We have some tags. The priority was set to medium and we have some notes and I assume we can change this as well. So wash the exterior and interior of the car. Maybe I just want to do the exterior. Maybe I want to change this to low priority or high. Nice, that works. Let's get rid of maybe the cleaning tag. Maybe add a new tag of chore. I don't love this like white background thing we get when we type these in. But again, this is something that we didn't really have a full design for. So good job overall with this. And then we can go ahead and submit this. And cool, now we have this task, which we can edit or delete. So if we pull up edit, cool, this brings up this form again. Of course, we can make more tasks. So yeah, overall, this looks pretty much perfect to me. So now let's take a look at the code as well. Okay, so here's the code and there's a ton here. So I won't be able to show absolutely everything, but this seems to be the entry point of the application. We have a head. So this is actually using next, not just react. And then we have our main and it looks like we are controlling the modal state from the home and then sort of using prop drilling with is modal open and set is modal open. So sort of passing those down. I don't know if I love that or not, but it seems fine to me. Definitely a reasonable way to do that being as that sort of modal state is shared across multiple places in the application. And then looking at these classes, I think these are tailwind classes. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong about that. I haven't done a ton of Tailwind development before, but I think those are Tailwind classes. It looks like we're also using Redux. So we have a reducer for the profile. So I guess this controls if we are signed in or not using a reducer. So that seems fine to me. Personally, I probably would have just used a context for this. I don't tend to use Redux very much, but Redux is a perfectly reasonable way to do this as well. Then we have this components folder. Let's open up that why you'll love it section because I was curious how exactly that works. So it looks like this is using a grid like we sort of expected. So yeah, this is a grid. Great job with that. Then we have some images. I'd like to see alt attributes with the images, but regardless, great job on this. Now, I also want to look at something a little bit more complicated to see how he dealt with complicated logic. So let's go to the task section. I'm assuming this is the tasks has a lot of task logic. So this looks like a much more complicated file, a bunch of state, and then we have some functions. It looks like this is making an API request. So that looks good to me. I think this is Axios, which is fine. I prefer just using fetch, but Axios is fine. A lot of people like it. Then we have some use effects. Generate task is another function. I think I would have liked to see some of this code moved into helper files or maybe using custom hooks, something to sort of separate the logic a little bit from the actual component. But regardless, the code looks pretty clean and it looks like he is using good modern syntax. So yeah, everything here looks pretty good to me. No huge red flags. And I think for the most part, this is very well implemented. So yeah, of course, this isn't exactly how I would have personally implemented this, but that just goes to show that there's multiple ways to implement the same thing. 
I think this implementation is, for the most part, pretty clean, and everything seems to be working as expected, which is what matters most. So let me know what you think, but personally, I think this was a big success. We did manage to build an application completely using freelancers from Fiverr, and I think they did a great job. And in many places, they did a much better job than I would have done if I just did it by myself, especially with the design and the content writing. And of course, a big thank you to Fiverr for making this entire video possible. And if you are ever looking to hire a freelancer, there will be a link down in the description. You can use code Connor for a discount. And if you did enjoy this video, then you should watch this one next where I hire four different freelancers to code the exact same website, but at different price points.